everyone, I'm Rebecca and welcome back to my sewing room. So I wasn't actually going to do this project as a video, I was just going to do it, but I realized two things. One, I didn't have a video for today to come out yet, I didn't have one filmed, and two, this might actually be useful to you. So hopefully it is. Do let me know in the comments if this video wound up being useful. But today we are altering a ball gown, specifically a mid-Victorian ball gown. And really specifically, we are altering it for stage to be able to do a quick change. So we are taking what is a slightly more historical type of ball gown, as in it laces up the back, and we are actually going to put a separating zipper in it. However, it's not quite as easy as that, and I'll get into that more in a moment. The main reason that I'm doing this is because I am currently in a production of Little Women. We open a week from yesterday, from if you're seeing this video the day it comes out, and yeah, that's a little scary to think about. <laughs> and I am playing Joe in it. I'm also playing Meg in it. We're trading off. But as Joe, she has an approximately 30 to 40 second change where she goes from day wear into evening wear to get ready for the ball. It is literally about three quarters of a page of dialogue. That's it. <sighs> So, uh, I have worn this costume once before in theater, and I had what I thought was a quick change into it. That was for Jekyll and Hyde several years ago, and for that show, I had about a minute and a half to change into this ball gown. So, I worked with our assistant stage manager who was backstage. We practiced it several times. I had another actor helping me as well, and in that minute and a half, she pulled tight the laces. We had really, really long laces, so she didn't have to go through any eyelets. She pulled tight the laces. We laced it up. The actor who was helping me helped me to put on my gloves and a tiara, and I also had, of course, to change out of the day wear that I was wearing previously. So that felt like a very quick change. And then I realized how quick this changes, and there is just literally no way that this dress can be done up with laces in 30 to 40 seconds, not to mention taking off what I was already wearing. For one thing, not only does this dress lace up the back, but if you'll notice, it has this Bertha that comes over, and the Bertha has hooks and bars to the shoulder right here, and it also has a series of three snaps, whopper poppers, that go across the top of the bodice, holding it in place. So it is not just lacing, it's also that. This is an off-the-shoulder ball gown, relatively little range of motion as far as the person wearing it, because it's off the shoulder, and this is the kicker. It turns out that what I didn't remember is that it laces over a modesty panel, as in it does not lace all the way shut at the top. It laces all the way shut at the waist, but by the time it gets to about mid-back, like above the bra strap or above the corset, it no longer laces all the way shut. So I had put a modesty panel in here for Jekyll and Hyde. It's right there and it was great, but I didn't remember that fact because when I first made this dress way back in like, I want to say 2012, it did lace all the way closed, but time has changed things. So I did actually already put in the separating zipper. I put this in the end of last week and was like, okay, I don't think this is going to fit. Let's try it. So my friend Rachel helped me to try and zip it up because, again, range of motion, I can't get to the back, and it zipped up to this pin right here. So it zipped up this amount, and after this amount, it got farther and farther away from the other side, and by the time it hit right here, it was actually five inches away from the other side. So we're talking like that. So that's the modification that we're doing today. We are going to modify this ball gown to have panels in the back added so that it can zip up at this angle. 
wish me luck. The first thing that I'm going to do, obviously, is remove the zipper that I already put in. This zipper, it was really quite easy to sew in. I don't know how well this is going to show up on screen, but there is little tiny row of stitching right on the edge of the bodice here. You can see the eyelets here as well, but right on the edge, I just top stitched to the zipper. There's also bones in here, by the way. This is a boning channel, and that's part of the reason why I can't just like add a panel to the side or something. First off, skirt hung from the bodice. Secondly, bodice seams all have boning in them. It's not gonna be the easiest change. That's why we're adding the panel to the back because that was where it didn't close before. And so I'm gonna take the zipper off and then show you what I'm doing next. So hopefully you can hear okay because I have an embroidery machine going on in the background on another project that you will see soon. But these are the little wedges that I've cut out for the back of the bodice. Luckily I have oh, still more of this fabric so that's really good. I am going to back it with cotton twill. I was hoping for a heavier twill like I used to be able to get which is what the rest of the bodice is lined with but you know what can you do. This is four and three eighths inches across at the top one and seven eighths inches across at the bottom. I'm going to put this which is the center back right sides together on the machine flip them right side out so they make like a hard surface I'm not going to put a bone in there hopefully I don't regret that but this is where the zipper will be attached to and then this wedge is going to insert behind the back of the bodice so that it will wind up actually covering up the eyelets and then where the waist is big enough this should come to nothing because of covering up the eyelets and the seam allowance. So I'm glad I have more fabric because I just realized that I cut these wrong. I was about to go and serge around these edges. This, these are now the finished edges and I was going to serge it in from here because this is the widest point. So that it's not the widest point. I haven't gotten there yet. That is the widest point on these patterns that I drew. This should be here and then it should taper kind of inwards and up and I didn't do that so I guess I'm doing this again. So I redid the shape of these and I'm really hoping that they will work. I'm not positive that they will. Uh, just as a reminder, this is what I was using before. This was going to be the center right here where the zipper goes, but I realized it just wasn't working. Like this was going to wind up having to curve weirdly and buckle and it was just not working. So I'm hoping that this one will work. This is actually going to be the center, this really weird shape right here, because the edge that it's connecting to is a straight edge. So I feel like straight edge to straight edge makes more sense because otherwise I'm going to get a curve here and I don't want that. If anything, I need more of a curve here. I don't know if this is going to work at all because this seems like so weirdly shaped, but I'm going to give it a go because I've got nothing better. So yeah, the zipper will go here because zippers can curve easier than boned edges and that's what we're going to give it a try. So I have the weird little pieces pinned in place on the bodice right now and I am just going to stitch them in place. I'm going to do a line of stitching just on this side of the eyelets right along here. And I may do another line of stitching right on the edge, probably just kind of to reinforce it so that this doesn't wind up flapping backwards. And then the zipper, which I've left down here at the bottom, I just unpicked it to where it needs to be unpicked. The zipper will wind up going on the edge here. It's hard to show you this one handed like that. And hopefully it will get around this weird shape right here and be able to close just right naturally. I can't do this up myself, it's back closing, so I won't know until I get to the theater tonight, but I will bring you along with me to show you at that point. I like how this video started out as kind of like a tutorial and has turned out into a ways not to do something because I'm pretty sure this is super, super wrong. It is making a weird bulbous curve right here, which I mean, duh, of course it is because that's the shape that it's coming together. It's two curves coming together, and that is what two curves do. I don't know how to make this actually work, and of course I have no way of trying it on myself. So sorry that this video might be garbage, but I don't know what to do about this. I literally have no way of trying it on until I get to the theater, because that's the first time I'm going to see a person who can actually do up the zipper, and I am... 97.9% .9 positive that I cannot do up this zipper myself, but I might try. Well, I have an answer, and the answer is, first off, I was able to get it on 
most of the way by myself. I actually wound up being able to do the zipper most of the way up backwards without my arms and sleeves, turning the bodice around, putting my arms in the sleeves. I had had the great idea to tie a ribbon to the zipper pull so that I could just reach up and pull it up, except of course that the ribbon untied itself and came out of the zipper pull, so that didn't work. But it is most of the way up, and as you can see, I didn't need this ridiculous bulbous thing at all. So yeah, I'm gonna get rid of that, I guess, because um, apparently Rachel's measurement was off a little. She doesn't sew, don't blame her, but you know, she gave me help and it wasn't accurate, but that's okay. <laughs> so I am going to just undo the zipper in those places. I The zipper is top stitched, or rather the fabric is top stitched to the zipper. I'm hoping that there's a way that I can just kind of tuck that bit in and re-top stitch it. So I might have to play around a little bit there with like the pressing and stuff, but I think it's the right measurement at the top. I mean, I couldn't do up the zipper all the way by myself because the ribbon came out, but it seems like it's a fairly decent fit. Yeah, no, can't, can't do anything more than that. Uh, but I do not need that bulbous bit underneath there, so I'm gonna get rid of that and I'll see what that looks like. All right, so it is now on and fixed. It looks honestly pretty wonky. Like, it's super wrinkly here. It's I could have still removed more of the curve right here specifically, and also somehow it wound up being that like the zipper didn't go as far up on one side as on the other, so I kind of eased it into the zipper a little bit, so it is not great, but I think for the stage it will be fine. Uh, I actually managed to get the zipper all the way up this time before turning it around, so that's cool. It is now all the way up. I do have the ribbon on it still so that I can unzip myself, because you know, that's important. And uh, the one thing that I can't do is I can't get the Bertha up there. <laughs> because <laughs> that connects to the shoulder over here. So I'm hoping that the top fits fine, even with that added ease in there or added fabric in there, that the Bertha should still snap in place everywhere. When Rachel put it on me, she still got the Bertha closed, even though the dress was like five inches open, or I guess not five inches open. So that should be fine. The one other thing that I have to figure out, honestly, what undergarments I'm wearing for the show, because right now I've got a bra and modern camisole on, and obviously this doesn't work. <laughs> So I do have to figure out if I'm just gonna like tuck these straps down, if I actually want to wear a chemise. The thing is that my chemise that goes for this era is still not this off the shoulder, and so it would still show. It would be white cotton showing, but it would still show. I do also have the chemise that I made for Elsa, which has the ribbon straps that I can take away. I will link to that video down below if you haven't seen how to make the ribbon strap chemise. Uh, but the ribbon straps are on snaps and do tend to pop sometimes, and I would obviously want them secure for the rest of the show and just not this scene. So I will have to figure that out, but at least the ball gown hopefully is done. I mean, it's not done done. I obviously have to get the tops of the zipper bits tucked away somewhere, and I also have to put on one of the snaps again. But I'm going to hopefully show you this next footage of at the theater, us doing the quick change. So let's go to the theater. So before we get to the theater, I just want to point out that there's definitely still something weird because this is the Bertha uh, with it snapped in place here, but not here. This is the bodice. Obviously the bodice is way bigger. So I'm not exactly sure what is going on there. I was going to sew these little bits down right now before I get to the theater, but I don't think I'm going to because I think I need help putting this on where I can actually put the Bertha on first and see what's going on. I, yeah, because this obviously, like, when you lay it flat, it just goes above the top of the bodice. So, I mean, if that is what needs to happen, that's fine. But then I do need to move snaps because I still want a snap over here. And maybe it just needs to be lower. So, I think I'm going to have someone at the theater help me with that. And hopefully I'll be able to show you a quick change in here. But it might not be the exact full thing. 
So it is now Friday. Yes, that is after this video was supposed to have been released to my patrons because they get everything a day early. And the day that this video is supposed to be coming out, I don't know if this video is going to come out on time. Obviously, there was not footage of me doing a quick change at the theater because we did the practice or try on at the very, very end of the night and there were still issues. So there's a couple of issues that are, well, were slash are going on. The were issues were that I needed to redo all of the snaps on the back on the Bertha and I also needed to put a hook at the top, though I don't know how functional that hook is going to be, but it's there. And I think that was everything. Oh, and I needed to tuck those little flips flip flaps down. But the other thing is that actually even at that point with all that wrinkled back stuff going on, it was just way too big in the back. So I wound up taking out even more. I think at this point I took out at least another inch, if not more than that, of the back. There's literally mm, maybe a three inch gap that at this point that is being filled. So the original measurements so far off Again, I still don't blame Rachel. She doesn't sew. It's not her fault. But oh my god, it would have been easier if someone who sews and knows how to do this sort of thing was helping me and I wasn't really doing this on my own. Anyway, so the back is a lot better now. I don't think it's as puffy going on anymore. Like there's still a little puff, but at this point I give up. And I have done the snaps and put a hook in the top and tucked those little things in. So all of that is done. But the other issue is that I've tried this on now with multiple types of undergarments and come to the conclusion that I have to have straps. With the stuff that is going on on stage during when I'm wearing this, like I just, I need straps going on because otherwise there's too much going on here. So I tried a bunch of different configurations. I tried regular bra camisole combo, like modern bra camisole combo. I tried no bra actual like mid Victorian chemise, which that chemise just so limits my range of motion. And considering I would wind up wearing it for the whole show, that was a no go. Also, it still stuck out at the shoulders like this much and really made the sleeves even tighter because the sleeves are already really tight. So that didn't work. And then I tried where I went to go pull out the ribbon strap chemise that I made for Elsa. But then I remembered that at some point I actually sewed those ribbons just to the chemise because they kept popping open. So they are affixed now. The snaps are still in there. I literally just sewed the snaps shut. But yeah, they're affixed now. However, what that chemise does as opposed to a camisole is that it has very pale pink ribbon straps. So they blend in a little bit better than modern camisole. It also gives a little bit more structure so that helps to hold things in and make things a little smoother and it gives a little bit of lace so it actually fills in the neckline both here and I think a little in the back. Yeah a little bit. I don't know that I like the back fill in to be honest but I do like the fill in here. I think that's still better. However I'm wearing it with the bra which means that I need something to cover the strap situation. So that's what I've been trying to figure out now is what to do to cover it. I honestly, I feel like I like this better. This is the absolute remainder of all of the gold lace that I have. So there's like one strap worth because this is pretty much taken up the whole thing. And uh, yeah, I can't get two straps out of that. Also, I'm not sure that I love just the ruffle. I don't know. I don't know. And I'd I really don't think this would be enough for, for two straps. So I'm pretty sure I have to go to Joanne's to see if they have more of it. This was the second best other option. I've tried like six options, um, but this was the second best other option, just that it's not obtrusive. However, obviously straps are still very present. So that's not gonna work either. And honestly, I feel like I would want this on maybe elastic or something, but I only have white elastic. I don't have nude elastic. And I feel like white elastic is gonna look super obvious under here. So I think I have to go to Joanne's before I finish this. I need this completely done by rehearsal tonight, not to mention the video that's supposed to come out tonight at midnight. And I've edited the previous parts of this video, so it's only now plus whatever else you see that need to be edited, so hopefully that won't be too hard. But I do still really, really want to show you the quick change, so I might still try to do that at the theater tonight. And also, I need to finish it first, so I think 
it's time for me to get out of this ball gown and go to Joann's and hope that they have more of this lace that I purchased in 2012. So I went to Joann's, but naturally they did not have any more of this lace. So I got three other options to play with at Joann's, but honestly all of them suck. So they're all gonna get returned and I'm going to work with these two together because they are the best option. So what I've done here is I've actually taken that little bit of lace that I had left and cut that strip in half uh, lengthwise, so two length pieces and I have gathered up one edge now and I'm going to attach it underneath the edge of this beaded ribbon. I like this beaded ribbon because it's a pale black, like it kind of gives off brown gold tones because it's got gold embroidery and brown beading on it. And so I feel like it really helps to pick up the plaid in the dress more so than anything that is actually black. And so I've gathered this up and I'm going to attach it right underneath like that. And then I'm going to sew these straps to the places that I've marked on the bodice. And hopefully this whole saga will be done. Well, I hate it. But at this point I have nothing else. So I guess that's how it's gonna be. And we will see how the quick change goes tonight. And if the director or costumer hate it as much as I do, maybe they'll like it. I feel like it looks ridiculous. Also, I'm not liking the lace showing this much because I realized when I put it on last time and there was all the lace showing in the back, it was because my chemise was shifted, but now it's like a lot of lace in the front and I don't like that either. Literally got nothing. Oh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> just back from rehearsal so you get a post rehearsal sweaty post wig me with this outro but as it turns out I guess I really didn't have anything to worry about because it was well received after all. So the quick change that you guys just watched was I think the second time through of doing the second act quick change. There's one in the first act and one in the second act both into the ball gown and the first act one is the fastest one. That one is about 40 to seconds to a minute. It sounds like it might actually be more like a minute than 40 seconds, but I want to get it to 40 seconds. And the second act one is um, probably, I don't know exactly how long, but it's longer. It's definitely longer. It might even be like two minutes, maybe even more, but that one also involves putting on the hoop. So that is what you just watched. The other one's faster. We did wind up practicing them a few times through and adding the wig in because that's another complication since my wig is really, really long for Joe. And we got the second act one down to one minute 40 something seconds, I think. Maybe it was one minute 30 seconds, somewhere around there. And the first act one we got to a minute 10. So that one needs to go way faster. But I think we'll be able to get it there. I hope. 
keep your fingers crossed for me as we go into tech week next week. But anyway, I know that this video totally devolved, but I hope that you liked it anyway and that it was helpful to you. If you did like this video, please go ahead and click the thumbs up icon. And if you'd like to see more videos like this from me, please go ahead and click subscribe and the little bell icon to be notified every time I post a new video. I do post videos here on YouTube twice a week with my sewing vlogs out on Tuesdays and other random costuming content like this out on Saturdays, but I post every day over on my Instagram, so please go follow me on Instagram, that's at Lady Rebecca Fashions. And if you'd like to help support all of the work that I do on this channel, I do have a link to my Patreon and my Kofi down in the description below. I'd also like to give a special shout out to my Edwardian level patrons, Sharon and Angela. Thank you all so, so much for joining me today for this rather strange video. Have a wonderful week, and I will see you very soon in my next video. Happy sewing!